One of the important things to understand is that we can use different types of software to help us understand how molecules can interact with each other. So previously there were things like Java applets that were available for download off the internet and then you could actually select a molecule and rotate it and kind of put it next to other molecules to see how they kind of interacted with each other. Um, now on the iPad and other types of portable devices you can really easily get a hold of softwares that help you to pick any molecule from a simple molecules such as carbon dioxide and water to slightly more complex molecules like glucose to really giant molecules like uh, extending branches of DNA and then also different types of enzymes and proteins that exist. So the idea here is that you can change the way that you're looking at these molecules and rotate them on screen, which I can't do for you right now in this PowerPoint model, but if you go to the App Store, if you have an iPad or iPhone, you can download something called Molecules and search from the free open source database and find any type of molecule. You can change the way that the atoms and bonds are represented into what they call space filling models or more of these like traditional ball and stick type models. And basically the point is, is that if you look at them and rotate them, you can come up with different ways and ideas or hypotheses for how some molecules might be able to interact with each other. And then one of the things that we can see is that especially when talking about polysaccharides, there's so many different types. You've got monosaccharides, the individual little sugars that are going on, or you can have disaccharides when a couple of them are actually connected in sets of two. Or if you make longer chains of these, so the general ways to draw something like this, and then you can get uh, different types of polysaccharides like starch or glycogen or cellulose. But the thing is, all of those are made up of glucose subunits, but they're slightly different versions of glucose subunits, and the way they interact with each other can completely change the properties. So, for example, cellulose as the material found in plant cell walls is made up of glucose units, but we as humans can't digest because we don't have the enzymes to break down cellulose and derive energy from the glucose molecules that are in there. So for example, if you look over at this diagram, these are specific beta D glucose molecules. And cellulose is made up of beta D glucose molecules. Starch and glycogen are actually made up of alpha D glucose molecules. If you're not sure uh, what that is, check out some of the previous videos where I talk about the difference between alpha and beta glucose. And because starch and glycogen are made up of alpha D glucose molecules, they can't align in such a way as they do in action, as beta D glucose does in cellulose. So you don't get these extra hydrogen bonds that are showing up. So it's one of the properties that makes cellulose a very good structural polysaccharide. So anyways, this just gives us more information about how digital computer models can be used to help us figure out special things about how molecules interact.